Welcome to curl 7.81.0 release presentation video. <clears throat> the first release of the year. So yes, hello and welcome. I'm, I'm of course Daniel Stenberg. I um, am, well, I founded the curl project. I'm the lead developer of in, in, in the project and I do a lot of curl development. I do it full time. I work for full Wolf SSL and this is how I can do this full time. Um, today I'm going to talk about the release 7.81.0 uh, and I'm going to have the same setup as I always do these uh, release presentation. I'm going to talk about some numbers in participation and time and everything, something about security, a little bit about the new features in this release, some of my favorite bug fixes. I believe I have 16 of them today and just a short blurb about the future, what might come next and, and you know, time and, and some of the things that are uh, going on in, in the curl factory right now. So, welcome, this is the 205th curl release. So yes, I've, and I've done every single release so far. I've been the release manager for all of them. So yes, I have some experience uh, with this now. And it is actually pretty safe and, and sound. We have an, a very established release cycle procedure. We have tests and we do a lot of that. And I have a release procedure that I'm following a checklist with staff. So I'm pretty safe and secure that this follows all the procedures and it is as good as we can make a, a release. And this time, we of course have participation by a lot of contributors. And in this particular release, we have 52 contributors. Actually, I think there are 53. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Uh, so 25 of, of these contributors are new in this release. So uh, now we're at 2558 in, in total. So uh, an immense number of uh, uh, contributors and of course, curl exists thanks to all of you who are helping out reporting bugs running things testing answering and 32 people wrote commits in the code for this release 14 14 of them are new 990 authors in total we're quickly approaching 1000 authors so i ideally hopefully we will reach 1000 authors in time before the next release who knows might be a reason for some additional celebrations for the next release. So that's uh, the participation and when it comes to time we have, uh, as you might know, we have an eight weeks release cycle so if everything works out fine we have 56 days between every release so that's the that's the plan and we have the, this time so no particular emergency made us uh, you know change that and now we're at um, the regular schedule and that means that we are also well soon 8700 days since we created curl there is no security advisory or particular uh, alert about any security problem this time and i just want to emphasize that we have a bug bounty and we pay uh, fresh cash dollars for anyone who reports uh, and uh, a confirmed security problem but this is now the fourth consecutive curl release without a security uh, advisory to be announced. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we will continue to do a few more without any one announced. But sure, if you have any, if you suspect you see any, report them and we will reward you. So there's a few things that uh, are new in this curl release. And I call them, they're actually one change, but I will highlight them as two separate things because in the libcurl side this new change this new feature is called curl opt mime options it's a new way to change how curl does uh, mime posts that is multi-platform posts when it comes to http um, you can also use that actually to send uh, email with smtp and stuff but uh, when it comes to HTTP, you use this option and you can use it to control how curl uh, escapes uh, some metadata in file names and variable names when sending multiple form posts. And why is this 
interesting. I actually did a separate blog post on this and you might want to read up on it, but it, it basically when when you send a multiple multi-part form post over HTTP, that's the way you send typically you upload images or, or firmwares and stuff like that when you do and multiple fields and you fill in the form and you press submit in, in the browser that's usually how you do it and over time the browsers have switched to a different way to escape some of those if you use special letters in in the file name and so on so now they're been they've been using the browsers have been using um well the percent encoded version of escaping such switching from the previous escape encoded way so basically we're just following the way browsers are doing it so there's a, a bit of a weird situation spec wise the way how you're supposed to do it but we're we're mimicking the browsers more now to be able since when the browsers are doing it one way you can be sh fairly sure that all the server side scripts and everything are going to adapt to that so over time we will get surprises if we don't do it like the browsers do it. So in the, the curl tool now have this option called dash dash form escape, which switches back to the old way of escaping. That's really, really uh, the sort of, you know, emergency break thing. If you really need to do it the old way and you have an, maybe some legacy uh, server side handling of that, that so you need it. And that the, so the libcurl option and this command line option, they basically allow you to switch back to the old way uh, in case of need. This is the, really the only new thing in this release. So 7.81.0, it's, it's a dot zero because of this new stuff. But we have more importantly, or as always, we've done more than a hundred bug fixes in this release, in 121 if we count them exactly, but you know, was a bug fix <clears throat> and I'm just uh, wanted to go over 16 of my favorite ones and they're now here in a sort of semi random order so uh, bear with me and uh, so uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about some things we've done then to make curl better in this curl in this release and uh, one one thing we uh, now when we write documentation for the Actually, we, when we write a segment of uh, documentation for a command line option in curl, uh, we do that is a separate files really. So each command line option has a separate document file and we generate a single man page at build time. And, and anyway, we now require more of those, uh, um, the metadata we require for every documented option. For example, we acquire, require a see also section for every option. So, and if you now, re if you checked out the man page now for curl, you will see that every single option now has also this, see also this option, which helps users to find related options, thereby understanding how to use curl better. And we also do this. So we have more on, of these sort of metadata fields required. So they're mandatory, which helps us make everything better when we add new things because it, it generates build errors if we don't provide correct um, data for, for the documentation. One of the little, little things we did that I did was I added a lazy alloc in the hash, the internal hash code for curl, which is this turned out to be a rather simple and silly thing. I just made sure that instead of doing the allocation of the uh, hash table in the hash init function. I did that lazily in the hash add function instead, so that it'll just you know postpone that and do that at the first time it actually adds an hash entry. And that turned out to be fun because we in in several cases we never actually use the hash table we create. We just set it up in case we will need it. So by lazy allocating, we save a, a few allocs in in a typical curl use uh, you know setup. So that was fun, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm constantly or repeatedly going back to to check how many allocs are we doing in a typical setup, and making sure that all the allocs we do are sensible, and that we are looking over what we can do to reduce the number and keep it at the same level. <coughs> I've 
enabled HA proxy support when built when curl is built to use the hyper backend. You know, hyper backend is a separate HTTP backend for curl, so you can build with hyper instead of the native HTTP code. And I've I've been working on we've been working on it for a long time that and we've gradually enabled more and more stuff to do when you build with hyper instead of the native. And we're down to very, uh, f a very small subset of tests that we now have disabled when you run build with hyper. I think we're down to 28, 26 tests disabled or so. It's still marked experimental because of these tests that are disabled, but we're really narrowing down. We're getting, we're seeing sort of the end of the tunnel uh, maybe uh, uh, soon. So this is just another step in that. And enabling support for HA proxy is just one way. We actually added support for a lot of other things too. And a lot of test cases we've just, you know, tweaked a little bit to make sure that they work even if you build with hyper. So we're getting there. So, and uh, if you want to see more Rust in a curl build, that's an excellent area to join in and help us polish. Other things we've done, of course, included that we now support this curl opt CA info blob option when you build with embed TLS. You know, we have a lot of TLS backends uh, in, in curl, or we support a lot of different TLS backends, and one of them is embed TLS. And usually when we add, you know, people add options to, to libcurl, we don't always add support for all of the TLS backends at the same time. So over time we have to add support for different options for different TLS backends. And in this case, um, we had support for another option for this TLS backend. We all, someone figured out and reported that when, when you write an application that uses the curl multi-interface that is doing uh, event-based, typically doing large amount of, of connections or transfers in, in parallel, uh, when, when an application then return errors from these socket or timer callbacks, we didn't really handle them the way the documentation said we did. Um, we actually mostly ignore them. And now we don't. And, and this is uh, important. If you're actually returning error from one of these callbacks ever, you should read up on it because now we actually take care of them and they are actually pretty significant uh, if you do. I've figured out that we never actually, uh, I mean, this, uh, this bug fix here, warn if too many output arguments were found. So if you're, you know, if you specify the curl command line, you can specify a number of URLs on the command line and curl will get all those URLs, you know, there's actually no limit in, in how many URLs you can specify. But if you know, if you want to get two URLs, you get curl, URL one, URL two, and then you can specify, for example, dash O for where you want to save that URL and you specify dash O again, where you want to save the second URL. And now if you spe specify dash O again, where you want to specify, where you want to, you know, save the third URL, but you never specify the third URL. That is, you have one output argument too many, more, one argument more than URLs. Curl will now actually output an, an, a warning just to help the user to understand <laughs> what might uh, that there might be something wrong with the command line we've m had this um if you specified a cipher list with curl or libcurl uh, when that was built to use nss as a tls backend we didn't actually do um, persistent connection pro properly because we couldn't reuse the connection because we had messed up the cipher list. Uh, so that was that was fun to do to fix. That helps persistent connections and persistent connections is a good thing and you want to have it. Now we do it better if you specify the, that. And other tiny things when you do LDAP with curl we now support the start TLS instruction. If you build curl to use the open LDAP particular version of um, LDAP. That basically means, so start TLS is the way how you upgrade or switch to the TLS version of the protocol from the plain text version, uh, sort of at runtime instead of at connection time. Um, might be fun if you're an LDAP user. We also fixed a little tiny problem with open, the OpenSSL uh, builds of 
you could actually, if you built curl with OpenSSL of one version and you changed that runtime run to another version, it could actually end up showing the wrong version. If that, if it was noticeable, if you went from uh, OpenSSL 300 to 301, but then curl would actually show the wrong version when you did that bump. It would say 300A, I believe, which wasn't correct. Now it's better. Uh, you know, this. <laughs> we actually had some internal silliness that we didn't actually return the error code when, when uh, one of these um, hashing functions uh, from the TLS libraries, if they would fail or return errors, we didn't actually, we would hide that error and just, you know, return a bad hash instead. Now we don't anymore. I would updated or changed how we search for a file in the home directory and that ha had really how we scan for, for example, .curl RC and in particular how we scan for .ssh slash known hosts when, for example, if you use curl's uh, SSH protocols like SAP or SFTP and I think it was most notable on Windows, because th on Windows they nowadays ship an, uh, an SSH client, and that found that uh, a known host directory in a different way than curl. So you, if you used the Windows version, it would find the file, but curl wouldn't. So it would be sort of a inconsistent. Now we fixed that. We improved how curl does. Again, connection reuse, but in this case, you for when you're using HTTPS proxies, doing HTTPS over that HTTPS proxy. So, you know, HTTPS over HTTPS. Uh, that was just a mistake that made it do bad. So, a lot of tiny things, you know, that might not affect very many of you. Uh, I HTTP 3 wise we didn't actually for any backend check the server certificate when you connected to the servers which was of course silly and http 3 support is still marked as experimental so there's no you know there's no alarming problem here but it was wrong and for the ngtcp2 version of http 3 that's one of the backends for http 3 in curl we now verify the server certificate properly when you use curl to do http 3 which you know if you have an experimental personal server you, you you absolutely need to take care of it if you use a publicly available to be three server it will usually just manage it works because work because you know public http3 servers usually use the regular pki pki as you know regular web servers then it'll just transparently work the way you thought it would work <coughs> A long time ago, actually, I think it was about seven years ago, I wrote a blog post about how you can use curl to connect to servers on port number zero. And that was fun because we did some experiments and port number TCP port number zero is really not treated as a normal port number in many cases. So I was sort of um, me and, and Frank, we set up a test server to do that and it was fun. And we I blogged about some of the issues with it. And now so for fast forward to, to this day, someone sort of repeated that experiment and tried curl on it and noticed that curl wouldn't accept port number zero. So since my blog post that long time ago until now, I had sort of introduced that regression that curl wouldn't accept port number zero as a real port number. And I fixed that now. So now it's actually back to <laughs> being a port number uh, when parsing URLs. So, curl can treat it as a normal port number even if it's in many cases it's not really a normal port number it's uh, it is um, special uh, and speaking then about uh, urls and uh, parsing urls i actually uh, went through and made sure that the, when parsing a full url now the url api can report or return a whole set of new uh, return codes basically to help uh, the user to understand where a problem occurs in the URL. Because previously, curl has just said, you know, uh, there's a parse error in the URL or invalid or URL malformat or whatever it says. 
and it's very unhelpful if you have a really long or uh, long URL or maybe you don't actually understand the entire URL syntax and format completely. Now it, it has different return curves for when it finds problems in different areas of the URL. Um, it might not in all cases actually help you, but it, it, it does identify better sort of if it's the username, is it the query part, is it stuff like that. Since they, you, they, you, the API can't actually, you know, give you a pointer this exact byte, maybe I should have done the your, uh, API like that, but I didn't, and I don't want to. I didn't want to uh, introduce any new APIs just for the sake of doing that. S uh, we got a fun bug report when, you know, curl supports SOX proxies. SOX proxy is a really, really ancient way to do proxying. I think it's from maybe in the 90s, but it's, it's very, very, very old. And SOX 5 is the modern version of um, SOX. I, as I say modern, and then you should just hear my air quotes. Uh, it's not modern, but it's newer than SOX 4. And SOX 5 has this version of the of the protocol that says that we call SOX 5H in, in curl. It means tell the SOX uh, SOX server to resolve the hostname instead of because in SOX you can normally either resolve the hostname locally or you can tell the server uh, proxy to do it. So you or the proxy resolves the hostname. In SOX 5H you ask the proxy to resolve the hostname. Anyway, so if you then use SOX 5H, tell the proxy to resolve the hostname, but you use a URL that uses uh, numerical IP numbers in the URL. So you know not a host name to resolve at all. Curl would pass that on to this proxy and say, here's a host name for you to resolve, even though there was actually not a host name there, that was a numerical IP address. And that was wrong, and it should actually send them as IP addresses using different, eight, you know, this acronym here, A-type, a a -type, address type, to the proxy, and now it does, and now it works better, and blah, blah, blah. That was the my I said I call them my 16 favorite bug fixes, but maybe those are actually 16 bug fixes that might actually affect you. They, we did a lot of other things, more minor, a lot of test case fixes, a lot of documentation improvements, and stuff like that. Go read the changelog if you want to really dive into uh, all the stuff. So that was what we did in this particular curl release or changes we merged. <coughs> We are of course looking forward already. We are aiming for this eight week release cycle. So in 56 days, we plan to do another, re another release and we want to call that seven, well, we are most likely going to call that 7.82.0 and we bump the minor release every time we add new stuff, right? And we uh, are presuming that we're going to add new stuff in the next release. Some of the changes that we have then going in the pipeline that might or might not be worked on for this release, that includes more HTTP3 fixes. Uh, I know I have more certificate checks for, for the other backend to work on, uh, the quiche backend, so that I want to fix that at least. And we have a few known bugs for, for HTTP3 that we want to get to and work on uh, and improve for the future. And we have this pull request for setting the stream window size, which helps users who are pausing streams, uh, in, uh, well, in particular, those users, it might actually affect other users as well. We, are, we have discussed and we are s possibly still discussing working on web WebSockets. I think that has sort of gone a little bit down uh, on the list maybe. Uh, we have talked about, and we, uh, that still lives in the pull request uh, repository, the support for the managed C protocol. I'm not too thrilled about it maybe, but if you are, maybe you should speak up and we can talk about it. There is definitely more hyper improvements uh, coming in the pipe. Um, uh, you know, I, I mentioned already a bunch of test cases that are still disabled when you build with hyper, and we need to make sure that all those test cases uh, get re uh, get enabled when you built with hyper some of them need uh, 
API fixes in Hyper itself. Most of them uh, require that we just fix code in curl. We're talking about a uh, dash dash no clobber option for curl that would prevent it from overriding a file if you, you know, you specify an output file that already happens to exist locally. We are going to remove MesaLink support. MesaLink is a TLS library um, that has been abandoned. It's not being developed anymore. And as of that, I don't think we should encourage users to build curl to use it anymore. It was never a, a, a very widely used backend. It's actually a layer on, on the Rustles library with OpenSSL API support. And I think maybe the more modern way to use the Rustles is to go with the Rustles FFI binding instead. And that's we already support that as well. So if you're, if you're into that, maybe switch to that TLS backend instead. And we will just remove MesaLink support. We added MesaLink support in on in the autumn of 2018 so just a little bit over three years old so yeah we are discussing and and the potentially going to support this export import of ssl session ids and tickets um and why not the curl follow no custom method option it's you know i I've talked about this many times or blogged about it and, and whined about it when you people are using curl uppercase X on command lines because it'll change all. You know, it, if you specify that you, you want to use a custom method uh, for HTTP and you use you follow the redirects, it'll use that custom method on even on the redirects and everything might go bad and everything everyone will cry. But in this this particular change then will could make us uh, support a dash capital X option that only changes the method for the first request and not for the requests that are done when following redirects. Uh, maybe a little bit of a complicated explanation, but uh, read up on it. And I think that is might go forward. I, I'm not entirely sure. Someone submitted a pull request uh, uh, for supporting HA proxy protocol V2. The HA proxy protocol is a very simple protocol that just appends uh, or actually prepends uh, data to a proxy about where, uh, where you're coming from. Uh, so, and we already support V1, and I think we can support V2 also in this pretty neat way, actually. So, I, I, I'm in favor of merging that. So, those were some of the things that we're working on. I'm sure that there will be others as well. So people are always submitting new things that I that we haven't really thought about and they'll just you know pop up and if you have anything you want to merge or, or think we should have just bring it to us and, and we can discuss it because these are nine items here we might I mean all of these will not get merged into the single release because that would be just too much to handle in, in one particular release but the most the most mature ones the ones with people are actually you know pushing for and are active driving and, and making really nice we can certainly discuss to merge and and if you have other things and you want to do that bring it and we'll we'll have a talk the next release then is planned and scheduled to happen on march 2nd 2022 so lots of twos in that version right 82 on march 2 2022 so if nothing else breaks the schedule we're sticking to it and you can always find our planned or you know in progress release notes on this url on the cross site you can just find it on the site you don't have to remember this url um, so yeah and uh, as i mentioned before we are planning to bump to version 8 in 2023 and we are now uh, 439 days uh, out or left until we'll do that you can uh, well, I've talked about it before. I, I'm not going to get into the curl eight uh, details just now because, uh, well, you know, you can figure that out. Um, of course, I do curl support full time. So if you or your company want help or actually want to support curl in general, head over to this URL, read up about curl support and, and uh, sign up and I'll help you and you will have a better curl experience with your uh, whatever you do 
if you find or suspect any problems in curl or you know even the slightest ones you know typos in the documentation things are not uh, actually doing what i suspected it would do when i did whatever you did submit a issue over on github if you uh, on the other hand as i mentioned before if you suspect a curl security problem uh, you know submit it here and uh, we, i separate the regular issues from security problems of course because here we keep them private and uh, non-disclosed while we're discussing them researching them fixing them and then we disclose them responsibly to the world as soon as possible and this of course to to minimize the impact and, and hurt on users so that just you know help everyone a little bit better and if you get your security problem verified and we confirm it i can promise you um a few thousand dollars in rewards depending on critical so you know severity of course we can do all this thanks to a lot of sponsors um and these are the ones that are here uh, in january 2022 a lot of these uh, from the top to bottom there a lot of these uh, top ones are infrastructure supporters and the the one in the bottom or more on the silver sponsors ha uh, helping us pay for bug bounties and stuff <coughs> good companies support them they're the best basically that is what i wanted to say about curl 7.81.0 uh, i did the the release earlier this morning the package is there go get it uh, and enjoy and until uh, next time bye